Hey guys! So today I'm filming a video on some books that I've read in the last couple months. I think I have 11 to talk about. So also, I don't know why my face is so red. It's so hot in here. Probably the oldest video, the oldest video, the oldest book that I haven't talked about yet is The Couple Next Door. Um, I can't pronounce the author's name. I'm so sorry. I'd screw it up. But this is the book. Um, and it basically just follows a couple's couple who leaves their baby at home and then it gets kidnapped. Service level written, if that makes sense. Like there's nothing like insane about this book. It's like the definition of like a binge book, you know? Like it's kind of like not super well written, but well written enough where you're like, I can read this in two sittings just because it's kind of just like, you know, like with reality TV, you kind of get that with this book. Um, although the ending was kind of a little bit more than I expected. But, um, I mean, it wasn't anything that made you, like, super brain think, you know? But it was definitely interesting enough where it, like, kept my attention, where I, like, read it, like, in only a few sittings, which I usually only read at night, so it's kind of rare for me to do that. Um, but I did really enjoy it. And the next, I think that this would be the next one, The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. I love thrillers. Um, this one, I love Gillian Flynn. She reviewed this, so I was like... <laughs> Follows a woman named Anna who lives alone in her house and a new family moves next door. She also struggles with a disorder that where she can't... She doesn't... Like, she has panic attacks if she goes outside. So she spends most of her time inside looking through the window. And then when she's in the... When looking through the window, she sees a murder happen. But then the family claims that it's false. It's definitely an interesting storyline. The only thing is, I struggle with characters that think that they, like, that follow main characters that self-pity a lot and, like, loathe. And, like, most of this book, I feel like, was just spent, like, reading about her drinking wine and just, like, watching people. Not watching people. I just feel like a lot of the book is, like, spent on her drinking wine and just, like, not sleeping and staying up all night and drinking more wine. Which, like, I know that's important for character development, but, like, I don't want to read about that the entire book. Like, let's get to the point type of deal. I really do. I did enjoy this book a lot more, being that there was one plot point that I just did not see coming that totally swiped me, which I love in these type of books. But I just wish... I just don't think I liked the main character, Anna, which made it really hard for me to like this book. Um, the next book is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I actually did not finish this book. Um, I did not... I love John Green's books for the most part. I think that you get what you get with John Green. Like, I'm not expecting an amazingly written, like, poetic, beautiful, deep, thriller-thinking novel by any means. It was just a waste of my time. I don't know. I didn't... I didn't like the dynamic of the main character and her best friend and the rich boy. Like, it just was... It was just so meh that it just wasn't worth my time reading, which makes me sad because I was super excited about it. Like, this is hardcover. I bought it, like, discounted. Um, I was, like, really excited to read it, and then it was just meh. I read two books by Lane Moriarty. Um, one of them I left at home over winter break, but I read this one first, The Husband's Secret. Um, basically, Celia finds a letter from her husband that holds his deepest, darkest secret and we follow how it altered, that secret alters the community and everyone else basically around her, even if she didn't realize it would affect them. I really liked this book. I also read Big Little Lies by her, which is about like, kind of like a PTA drama gone whack. Um, I liked this one a lot more. I feel like this one, I like how you get to know every single character that she brings up, but it's not a huge book. It's crazy. Like, I love how it switches perspectives. Both of her books did this. They switch perspectives and you really get to know each character that you're reading, which I like because that just brings, like, a fuller understanding to the entire picture. Like, you literally feel like you're involved in the community, especially in this book. And yeah, the only thing with this is I was talking to someone about this book. I was like, that's a really good point. There's zero redemption in this book. Like, a bad thing happens and then it just ends on another bad thing and it's done. And like, okay, I guess that's like different than every other book because most books would like resolve themselves with a happy ending. But this one is just like, let's plummet and then plummet some more. So, um, and then Big Little Lies by her was like a PTA on steroids type deal, I guess is what you could say. 
in a way. Um, that one, I definitely towards the end was like, okay, let's wrap this up because it did the same thing where you got to know every single character, but then it got to the point where like, I wasn't as involved in other characters' plot points and I just kind of wanted the book to end because it was about um, a parent's like group at a like elite, elite elementary preschool, I believe, and um, one kid was bullying another kid and then it kind of spiraled out of that about how it all affected the community and relationships between the parents and all those sorts of things. Um, that one, I definitely enjoyed this one a lot more, but that one was also super good. Woman, the Woman in Cabin 10 um, by Ruth Ware. I think this I this character in this book, so I read The Woman in the Window first, and the main character in here, what was her name? I don't even remember. I can't find it right now. But the main character in this book reminded me so much of the main character in The Woman in the Window that it made it hard for me to read this one. Um, basically, it follows our main character who got robbed before she goes on a work trip on a cruise ship, which has some sketchy stuff going on. Um, and she basically witnesses a murder and is told that it's not real. So actually there are two very similar kind of plots um, and this main character struggles with same sort of issues, alcohol, depression, and I just felt like I needed more from this book. I don't know, I just feel like it was very... if you're gonna go that route, I needed a lot more. And I finished it after a while. I didn't really want to, but honestly I just had nothing else to read. It's kind of a disappointment. I don't know, I feel like it was super hyped up and then it was just kind of Eh. Um, the next book is The Last to Let Go. I swear it sounds like I haven't read a lot of good books, but I promise I have. <laughs> um, The Last to Let Go by Amber Smith. I showed this in one of my videos. I also did not finish this book. I got super far. I literally only have 100 pages left, but the beginning was so good. Um, it's about a family whose mom kills their abusive dad, which sounds like a really intense storyline, and it was in the beginning. Like, they really focused on that, and then the younger girl, um, I can't remember her name, Brooke, Brooke, she finds a love interest and then that kind of over overshadows the entire book and it just makes it, like, it goes from, like, a really, like, good message, intense family novel to, like, a rom-com in, like, two seconds. Not a rom-com, because it's not comedy, but, like, a cheesy romantic movie in, like, two seconds. And it's, like... <laughs> This book didn't need that. Like, yes, give her, let her find her, like, love interest or whatever, but it doesn't need to be the entire book because there were so many other good elements going on in this book. I just got super frustrated and I didn't finish it, so. Probably my favorite book I read was The Nineteenth Wife. Also left it at home because I read it over winter break. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It follows two different characters, a, um, Anna Eliza Young from Brigham Young's Mormon Church polygamous family. Yeah, um, she's technically the 19th wife, but really she's like number 52. She also has an autobiography I really want to read. That's when you write about yourself, I'm pretty sure. Um, so there's that, like following her story through the Mormon church and polygamy, and it flashes forward to someone who was in the FLDS church, which is like the fundamental Latter-day Saints church that still practice polygamy, and you follow both of their stories. I thoroughly enjoyed both their stories. I especially enjoyed Anna Eliza Young's, um, and it just shares the entire story of basically the early Mormon church to where, how it, it cuts off when she, Anna Eliza dies, and then I think that's how you say her name, or it's Eliza, it's something around those lines. Uh, his mom kills someone on their um, base, for lack of a better word, and she gets put in jail because he's like the head Mormon FDLS guy, and it follows how he's gonna get her out of jail basically. Um, or tries to get her out of jail. Super interesting. I love the book so much. Um, definitely my favorite book I've read. If you're interested in, like, historical fiction, you gotta read that one. It was so good. Like, and it was one of those where it was hard for me to separate the line between, like, because it's historical fiction, so especially the Anna part, like, yes, it's based off her autobiography. Yes, these things really happened, but yes, like, this isn't an a hundred percent account of it so it was like so hard for my brain to distinguish it I was like make the line make the line but like I couldn't make the line and then the book I'm reading now I also really love it's everything I never told you definitely like it a lot more than I was liking the other book um, I read little fires everywhere by her also as well and loved it the way she writes it's just so captivating and 
deep and thoughtful and little detailed and it's like, ah. So that's my book video. I hope this had some interest to you. I'll see you next time.